Hello, welcome to the channel and thanks for watching. So this video is all around my Necromunda Ashways terrain. You can see the dirty, rusty, flaky paint effect we've gone for here. Absolutely ideal for ash wastes, but also brilliant if you want to use this scenery for normal 40k or any of the systems where it could quite easily be dropped into a jungle or you know a sort of tundra effect terrain because we've gone for an abandoned kind of military station look with the colours I've chosen uh, and obviously PDF stations are across the galaxy um, and would be you know sort of this prefab will be used everywhere so it is for ash wastes but you could also use it everywhere else now in terms of the scenery and the actual build fairly simple build actually nice big chunky terrain really enjoyed putting this kit together couple of bits to watch though is when you're building these platforms you've got an option on the height you want to put them at with the kind of the posts and poles that go down and support the platform just kind of watch that because it's not super clear on how high these things are going to end up or low now i chose to do them all at the same height now it's not in the instructions to do that but i wanted them all at the same height in the platforms and i've left off some of the cabling that um, supports the hab structures because i didn't want those on all the buildings so I have deviated a little bit from the instructions you get in the kit, but that's, you know, uh, not too obvious. So I sort of point the one out, but very nice to build, very easy. One thing to bear in mind, though, there are on some of the larger panels, particularly where the doors and things go together, some very, very large gaps, which is fine. You could leave, you know, and this is how the building is constructed or something like that, but it is better to fill them. Now, I did. I will drop a video fairly soon on the channel about a quick and easy way of filling gaps in plastic models, so kind of keep an eye for that one. Other than that, though, the buildings go together really nicely um, and just, yeah, really, really nice piece of kit. Now, I chose to battle damage. So what we're doing here is using a pin drill, a fairly wide drill bit, and I'm just drilling what would be bullet holes into the surface of the plastic. You could leave these buildings pristine. I just think it looks better messed up. Now, once you've drilled a hole maybe half a mil deep, use the edge of a really sharp hobby knife just to widen it out a little bit, make the impact kind of crater just look a bit more interesting. And then once you've done that, when you've got a hobby knife in your hand, go around and almost cut some of the um, neat parts off. So you don't want this looking completely smooth because this is supposed to be a battered, rundown building. Um, and it might not be super obvious when you finish the paint job that you've done this battle damaging process, but it does make a visual difference, especially adds into that kind of uh, rough effect. So definitely worth doing. Just go around some bullet holes um, and just some scrapes to make it look not quite so pristine uh, as it started off. So what I've done now, spray black, spray with a silver uh, colour on it. And now we're starting the dirtying up process. Got a bit of sponge from the inside of a figure case where you've kind of customised it and using a dark brown colour and just blotting it on using the end of the sponge, not a lot of paint. And this is beginning to layer up uh, the dirt and the grime that's gonna make a much nicer rust effect. And we're taking a slightly lighter brown doing the same with the end of that sponge. Now I use three different colors in the end to do this. You could use multiple, you, know, you could use loads, or you could just completely skip this step and go on to the next step. What we're doing here, we're building up a number of colors that a lot of this isn't gonna be on show, but when we finish the effect, there's gonna be patches of this showing on the areas we don't do the main color on. And it just makes the rust a bit more vivid, a bit more interesting. Now, it's not something I do all the time. If you've watched a lot of my channel, like my Nurgle and things, I do a lot of rust effects and things on there. But I don't do this on tanks and things because you've got enough other things to give visual interest. Whereas we're going for a fairly quick and easy colour scheme. So just doing this, it might not be super obvious at the end we've done it. But when you look close at the areas where we've not got the base colour on, these colours really do make a difference uh, in how it visually looks when you know the scenery and the models in your hand. I think if you weren't doing this to add interest to the model, you'd end up having to pick out lots and lots and lots of little parts on this build or doing lots of highlighting to make it interesting. This is just in my mind, you know, in my thoughts. So doing this might be slightly time consuming, um, but it speeds the overall paint scheme up. Now, in terms of total paint time on this, it dragged on quite a long while, actually, if you follow my Instagram, but I've been doing a lot of other work in a way, and I've had quite a few nights where I haven't actually painted. So in total, this was probably about 12 hours of work, and that's a little bit of a guess, but that includes the building and the painting, so it's a fairly quick scheme. Now onto a personal favourite of mine, the Grillen uh, Earth. This is a crackle medium that Games Workshop do, and I'm just putting this on in random patches across the model. What I'm trying not to do, I'm trying not to put this on any of the patches where we've sponged on colour, because this is going to crack and look like the flaky paint, and you want uh, the silver areas to be still where the colour is. Now I'm using here a Vallejo crackle medium. This does a similar thing to the uh, Grillen Earth, but it cracks much, much smaller. So these are like micro cracks. It also enables you to kind of push the paint around afterwards 
um, and make it look where paint's bubbled and things. So again, I've painted this on different areas that I've put the agrellin earth on. Sometimes I've run it up next to the agrellin earth, sometimes, you know, I've put it away. So I've done this while the agrellin earth is still drying and that's fine. Um, and it is a subtle effect, this one. Now this is different to agrellin earth because you paint this on first onto a base paint, then you put paint on top of it and that's what causes it to kind of crackle. So two different crackle mediums, and again, two different subtle effects. And a lot of this paint scheme is about subtle effect so now we've uh, let all that dry thoroughly dried um, and then we're going on to the base layers now i've used an army green it's an army painter paint but any kind of green color would do obviously you could do this with red blue whatever you fancy but i'm going for that military kind of effect we are doing a bit more of a stabbing kind of effect on here not quite dry brushing because if you dry brush across some of these crackle paints it can uh, cause sort of issues especially with the grill and earth because bits will flake off which is fine if that's what you're going for but you know we're not here and when you're doing it we want to put the green paint on top of the crackle mediums we've put on because that obviously ignites it. We want to try and leave sections of um, the metal where you've put some of those sponge colours on. We want to leave that showing because these are the areas that are going to look like the big patches of rust across this model. Now, we are going to do a couple of little details, not super because I don't really want this to be tons of highlighting, tons of colours, tons of whatever, because this was a quick uh, scheme. The more little details you do, the longer it's going to take, obviously. But I'm picking a few out. So some of the cables, we're using a blue one, and we'll do that on the roof and the sides and that thing. And we're picking some details out on the light. So all I'm just doing is any old yellow, dropping it into the little squares on those lights. You know, slightly thinner brush, being real careful, because even though we're going to do a wash effect in a minute, the yellow will stand out if you get it in the wrong places. So just, you know, try and be neat and tidy when you're doing these pieces. Now you could go to town with other colours. I chose to paint the same colours onto the kind of equipment that's bolted onto the side of the hab and use a slightly different brown color just for the strapping things hold it down so i kept it fairly simple now i completely forgot to film but i did do like a uh, desert yellow color on the cloth that holds the equipment down and on the kind of uh, awning for this for the buildings that you've probably seen now one of my other favorite colors is using kind of a brass effect because it gives like an aged interesting look and i've gone around and put that onto all the what look like fixing bolts that are across all the kit that's on the walkways as well um, and just put it onto some of the machinery that i want to make look a bit interesting now it's the wash stage so this is one of the more time consuming parts of this build because you've got a lot of time to leave washes to dry so I do this on a night you know if you're going to paint the next night that kind of thing and i've used a vallejo sepia wash i use it all the time in videos any dirty wash will be fine when you're putting this on, what it will do sometimes is almost activate the Vallejo crackle medium. Now that's good, you want it to do that. You will notice as you're putting it on, you'll notice some of this crackle medium moving underneath the brush. And that's fine. I'll show you in a second what I've done with that. You can kind of push that paint that's moving into like a little pile to make it look like bubbling paint. And I'll try and show you the finished effect so you know what I mean. But if you do see some of this crackle medium moving underneath that wash, that's fine. That's why we've done that multi-sponge layer underneath. So you can move the crackle medium out of the way, let it lump up and it will look quite nice. Now we're going back over with the army green and you can see here how sort of dry brushy I'm doing this, that's a technical term, going very slowly over the model. Now here's the side section where I've already dry brushed and I'm just going over again to build up those paint layers to make it look um, like the effect we're going for so do not rush this stage you can see what i'm talking about around there where i've just shown the brush strokes that's where a patch where the paint bubbled uh, under that wash layer and we've moved it you can also see the cracks on the flat sections of the paint from the workshop crackle medium so two different effects from two different crackle mediums there and hopefully you can see here look that's the kind of effect around those bolts lots of patches of uh, rust and things showing through multiple effects on different panels but it is very very subtle and it's about building up quick techniques to make an you know an effective impact now if you watch a lot of my videos this is the point now where you i would typically say right i'm going back over the blue i'm going back over the yellow i'm going back over the brass i'm not doing this on this build partly for speed but partly because i want it to be dirtier than usual and i don't want it to be super highlighted so you could um, but i chose not to on this for again for those very reasons i am however taking a vallejo rust wash and just putting this over the top into those bullet holes into the sections where we've taken chunks out of um, the scenery just to see the rust from internal kind of running down the terrain you can see there if i put too much on i just use the dry brush to um, take it back off and that gives the final effect so back to this original video lots and lots of quick simple techniques build up uh, gradually to make what i think is quite a nice effective um, scheme 
So as ever, if you enjoyed that, like, comment, subscribe, drop any questions down below, and hopefully I will see you on another video.